He hears the secret voice, and that's the voice of the divine in each of us. Uh -huh. He also hears the word that knows, and we have a capital W on word. And, yes. And whenever I have studied word, I remember in the Christian faith, uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was made flesh. So the word has the power to create. Right. And he sees the secret face that is our own. Because the divine is in us, our face is the divine's face also. It comes in many, many forms and many, many ages and many, many different experiences, but it's always our own face that's the sacred face. Okay. So please carry on. The inner planes uncovered the crystal doors, strengths, powers, and influence. Influences touched his life. Well, he's open to all of this. And it's interesting that the inner planes have crystal doors, doors made of crystal, and therefore strange powers and influences have touched his life. Then he's going to tell us a lot more, very beautiful lines here, something to, to even memorize, they're so beautiful. A vision came of higher realms than ours, consciousness of brighter fields and skies, of beings less circumscribed than deep lived men, and subtler bodies than these passing frames, up so fine for our material grasp, acts vibrant with a superhuman light and movements pushed by a superconscient force and joys that never flowed through mortal limbs and lovelier scenes that earths and happier lives. Okay, well, and happier scenes then earths. Yes, yes, yes. When we were met with Ranganathan last night for uh -huh. the synthesis of yoga, he said to me, in, in answer to my question about other worlds, because the word worlds was pluralized there, he said, I don't think it's other worlds. He said, I think it's only the worlds of the earth. But that's not what I feel when I read these lines, Shilpa. I read these lines and it's... Uh, it's, of course, they're higher realms than ours, they're the uh, supermental realms. Uh, they're consciousness of brighter fields and skies. They're even a consciousness of beings less circumscribed than brief-lived men. So these beings uh, live much longer, and even subtler bodies than these passing frames. Passing frames mean our passing bodies that, that die. Oh. Obje objects too fine for our material grasp and acts vibrant with a superhuman light and movements pushed by a superconscient force and joys that never flowed through mortal limbs and lovelier scenes than earth's and happier lives. So it seems to me that these are supermental beings. Yeah, so it's like a picture of the heaven as if like they call the Swarg Loka. Yes, it, it is, certainly is. Uh, but it is something that is vibrant with a superhuman light. So mm -hmm. I think it's the uh, supermental world that he's speaking of here. Right. And, he, and he'll even say more about it now as we go on. A consciousness of beauty and of bliss, a knowledge which became what it perceived, replaced the separated sense and heart, and threw all nature into its place. 
Oh, very beautiful. A consciousness of beauty and of bliss. That's what I have longed for all my life. That there could be beauty and bliss and joy, which is bliss, and harmony amongst all peoples. And then he says, a knowledge which became what it perceived. So when it looked at something, it knew it exactly. And this is, for example, there are people who, like Sradalu, who can see the aura. And so they know exactly what you are. They, they won't tell you about that, but they know exactly. And Mother, when she met us, knew our past and our present and the potential of our future. She could see that in one glance. And then we see that this separated sense and this separated heart is mm -hmm. drawn, drawing all nature, all nature. That means all kinds of nature. It means uh, animals, plants, birds, flowers into its embrace. And now he's going to speak of the mind. So, Narit sir, just one question coming to my mind here because you referenced Shraddhalu sir. So, you said Shraddhalu sir can see the aura. Yes. Okay. So, aura in the sense... Uh, the, what, the, what that surrounds our bodies. That surrounds okay. our bodies. Um, mother calls it also the material envelope. Okay. So, that material envelope, if it is strong... No disease, no illness can enter it. No darkness can touch it. And so we want to make that material envelope very strong. And when we, the best way to do that is to invoke the mother and her protection for us. And she'll put that protection all around us. Many of them could see, but they wouldn't say anything. You see, they were too humble for that. And even if you asked many times, they wouldn't say. So okay. now let's see what the mind is going to do. The mind leaned out. The mind leaned out to meet the hidden words. Air flow and teemed with marvelous shapes and views. It had bigger celestial fragrances on the top of the bird. Honey of paradise. Yeah, I'm starting to lose your voice a little bit, but I got most of it. So it, it's very, 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 very beautiful. Um, because he's in this yoga of his release, Ashwapati's release. But Sri Aurobindo is actually speaking to us about himself. We know that. So hearing was a stream of magic audience. Audience here means uh, hearing. So hearing was a stream of magic, magic audience. Audience is, uh, refers to sound, magic sound. Yeah. I so think that is a little ahead, two lines ahead. On the tongue. Okay, yes. Oh, in yeah. the... Uh, Air glowed and teemed with marvelous shapes and hues. In the nostrils quivered celestial fragrances. On the tongue lingered the honey of paradise. And now you'll continue. So like when the sun rises first in the sky, I mean, before the sunrise, the time before the sunrise, when there is like, you know, um, all that uh, twilight time, um, yes, yes. Yeah, the top. Yeah. Uh, so, so that time you see, you know, sometimes these shapes in the skies and the sun starts rising, the hue that comes, uh, maybe even <laughs> much, much beautiful than that scene. But somehow, make that connection. Uh, well, that, and if that's, if that's resonant in you, then it's extremely important. Extremely important for you. You see, he is speaking of something that we already know, but we have forgotten. We have forgotten when we took birth, when we had to go through our family that we chose. 
and we had to have all those experiences of education and environment. So actually, we know those things, but we've forgotten them because we are the divine. And only in India you will hear that. All the other countries say you can become a son of God, but you cannot become God. Sri Aurobindo says we can become divine. So a bed, hearing is a bed for occult sounds that earth cannot even hear. You know, when we talk about dogs able to hear sounds that we cannot possibly hear, the eagle can see from two miles away a little mouse on the earth. Right. The lion has its great strength. All these things are going to come back to us with the supermental. Mother says we're going to be as different from man as man is from animals. The supermental will be as different from man as man is from the animal. They can hardly even conceive of that right now. But, you know, very often I feel if there, if we only didn't have to eat, if we could just get everything through the air, take everything mm -hmm. through the air. You know, the orchid plant, which is attachment to the divine, mother's name, takes everything it needs from the rain and the sun. It'll hold on to a tree, but it's not a parasite. It's an epiphyte. It just holds on to it. If, if I could live like that and forget about food, it would be wonderful. <laughs> okay, let's carry on because there's much more here. This is so beautiful. Yeah. A channel of universal harmony hearing was a stream of magical of magic audience. A bed for our sounds earth cannot hear. Okay, should I continue a little bit, Narasimha? Yeah, or? yeah. Please continue a bit. Yes. Out of the forward tract of slumber cell, the voice came of a truth submerged, unknown, that flows within the cosmic surfaces, ultimate and omniscient silence heard, held by intuitive heart and secret sense. So he is coming out of this hidden tract of slumber cell, and he hears this voice of a truth that is usually submerged. It's down below. We, we may hear it occasionally, but it, it is down below, and it's submerged. And, um, and he says, uh, unknown. It's unknown to us now, but because it flows beneath the cosmic surfaces and only mid an omniscient silence, it's heard. So when we have that silence fixed within us, and it is the most important thing in the beginning of the integral yoga, to fix that silence deep within us, because only then progress can be really made. And I find it a challenge every day to do it because we have so many arguments in Oroville and so many opinions. Everybody has his own opinion. And there isn't that collective harmony that we have in the Om Choir. Mm. It, it, it occurs then. So, so he says that it was uh, <clears throat> that, um, that, that voice is held by the intuitive heart and by a secret sense. So I think it would be a good time to read a few more lines up, up until the word sleep. Oh. It caught the burden of secrecies, deep and dumb. Was the unfulfilled demand of earth and the song of promise of unrealized heavens in all that hides in an omnipotent sleep. So we see again this sleep, this powerful sleep. 
Everything is hidden in this sleep. Even the promise of unrealized heavens is hid, hidden. The, the unfulfilled demand of earth is hidden. So all of these things are hidden in an omnipotent, all-powerful sleep. Now, we're going to see next week when we read through this, what ha actually can happen mm -hmm. in, to us in this time, in this life. It, it's very, very, very powerful and very beautiful. And that's quite a bit. So would you read from the beginning again now? Yeah. Maybe we could start, he lived in the mystic space. After laying in the arms of the eternal's peace. Yes. He lived in the mystic space where thought is born and built was by an Ethereal, 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 e yeah. ethereal, ethereal, mm -hmm. and nursed by an ethereal power, and fed on the white milk of the eternal strength till it grows into the likeness of a god. In the witnesses' occult rooms with mind built walls, on hidden interiors. Lurking passages open the windows of the inner sight. He owned the house of undivided time, lifting the heavy curtains of the flesh. He stood upon a threshold, serpent watch, and peered into gleaming, endless corridors, silence and listening in the silent heart. For the coming of the new and the unknown, he gazed across the empty stillnesses and heard the footsteps of the undreamed idea in the far avenues of the beyond. He heard the secret voice, the word that knows, and saw the secret face that is our own. The inner planes uncovered their crystal doors, strange powers and influences touched his life. A vision came of higher realms than ours, a consciousness of brighter fields and skies, of beings less circumscribed than brief-lived men, and subtler bodies than these passing frames. Objects too fine for our material grasp, acts vibrant with superhuman light, and movements pushed by a superconscient force, joys that never flowed through mortal limbs, and lovelier scenes than earth's and happier lives. Consciousness of beauty and of bliss, a knowledge which became what it perceived, replaced and separated sense and heart, and drew all nature into its embrace. The mind leaned out to meet the hidden worlds, air glowed and teemed with marvelous shapes and hues. In the nostrils, we were celestial fragrances. On the tongue lingered the honey of paradise, a channel of universal harmony. Hearing was a stream of magic audience, a bed for occult sounds earth cannot eat here. Out of a covered track, of slumber cell, the voice came of truth, the burn, a gnome that flows beneath the cosmic surfaces, only mid an omniscient silence heard, held by intuitive heart and secret sense. 
You see, when you read it like that, it comes so beautifully. And I know that your expressiveness is coming out more and more. Makes me very happy. <laughs> Thank you, Narit sir, all because you are giving the meaning and making it easier on me. I, I am. It is well, just because of you. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I'm putting any any effort there. Oh, but it, it's coming through you. That's wonderful. Namaste. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you.